Bisami, Bisami, welcome, welcome here in the bar London. You see already Sylvia and you see Svetlana. I would like to congratulate you that you found the way this Saturday morning. But first, who I am? I'm Frank, Frank schreiber -Hoth. I'm German. I'm one of the founders of the German Green Party and one of the first members of parliament in Germany and the first in the European Parliament. And I still want to change the world and I discovered it's impossible alone. You have to bring people together. And therefore I stayed after my time here in the European Parliament in Brussels and I became the nickname team of networking, which was very difficult during COVID times. <laughs> But then it was allowed to use a terrace of a restaurant or a bar for meetings. And this restaurant is not normal, it's very special. The owners are from Turkey and the staff is from Armenia. That means two cultures, two countries who are not in deep love. And it is the most international of all these bars here. For example, I met here inside the former Prime Minister of Belgium. I met here the guy who was on the moon together with Armstrong. But he was a disaster. He said, forget the globe. Let's look on the Mars because we destroyed it too much. And therefore I proposed them to have meetings here on Saturday morning because on Saturday morning they are suffering. You see it here, it is not a lot happening. But the wonderful thing is even when we finish here at 12, 30, 1 o'clock, some of you can stay, and people who walk by see. And often people behave in a situation like this, like a sheep. Oh, there are already people inside, it has to be a good place, and they are coming as well. That means on a Saturday when I organize an event, up to the evening, they have much more guests than all the other restaurants together. Therefore, they are grateful that you were here and that we organized it. I discovered as well, and I'm coming to an end, that this world is dominated by male, not female. And therefore, I'm one of the founders of the European Women's Leadership Award, which is an award, seven or eight women every year in March, to incredible women who have done something which is oh no. And one of the laureates is Svetlana Spaich. Therefore, she will now be the moderator of this event because for most of you it's very easy if someone asks you, where are you from? For her, it's very difficult because she feels you a star. But she is now Sir. She feels from France, but not really because she is Parisian and her passport is Dutch. And one of the reasons why she got this European Women's Leadership Award is she's not only a talented interpreter and translator, Jacques Brel, you can read in Yugoslavia now in native languages because of her. She interpreted as well in Den Haag at the International Tribunal for the Crime of Yugoslavia, and she created, and this is really the end of my contribution here, the peace performance trade. What does it mean? About 100 artists, singers, mus musicians, painters, sculptors, who have an international, who have a international perspective from the EU and outside the EU are linked to her. But not really linked to her because it's a peace train. Therefore she chose the picture of a train you enter and you leave. And when there are events here in Brussels very often that members of her peace train are everything like it. Now, are coming together and 
company in framing this cultural event. Therefore, applause for Svetlana Spach! And the people outside, I did two things with them. I know now who they are. They are German-speaking people from Eastern Belgium. <laughs> and one of them studied here, and he will marry now. Therefore, he's with his friends here in Brussels. And I told them, when Sylvia is speaking, yeah, they should not disturb with a very male <laughs> attitude too much noise. Therefore, uh, thank you very much, uh, Frank, uh, already for this uh, beautiful presentation. And I will uh, continue because I do believe uh, with the train and everything I do, and also translation interpretation in passing, passing the message and passing the uh, passing the, the the gift the gift of love because uh, all gifts and all exchanges. And thank you for coming here for an exchange and I hope it will be a max to a maximum and exchange is a gift of our love and an exchange of love. I just have uh, uh, for uh, correctness towards, uh, towards uh, other people, I just have to say that uh, it wasn't just me who launched this uh, performance train, there were five of us uh, and it was launched initially, uh, the two people who had the idea and invited the five, the five of us uh, uh, of, uh, to, to start it, met through Frank. Uh, it was Silvia, uh, not Silvia, sorry, um, uh, Maria Palatino and um, Alhadi Agabaldur. And uh, they met at an event that was organized by Frank. So Frank is in a way key to the peace train uh, as well, but uh, that is the gift. He's telling you about my role in it and not his, his, of his, and his role is huge also because he supports us very much and it means uh, a lot to us. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's a group of uh, artists uh, revolving mainly around uh, musicians and poets uh, who through their work uh, stand for peace and tolerance and we believe <laughs> and I think you agree that it is more important now than ever and peace performance train and also an organized co uh, an event co-organized uh, uh, with Frank exactly a year ago is how Sylvia and I met uh, and uh, Sylvia is, uh, is a poetess so we met at an event uh, uh, that um, Frank and I organized last year together with the peace train of a man who unfortunately passed away a month ago. So we are starting with the tribute, uh, who is also a poet, and he published a book in 13 languages in which 40 pages are dedicated to peace performance train. There are our uh, experts, uh, excerpts uh, from poetry and from plays. Uh, his name is Vonko Penovic, and unfortunately, exactly a month ago, he, he passed away. But uh, his, uh, his son is still shining. Uh, and uh, with Sylvia and Frank, we decided to start with a small tribute. Uh, but first, I will introduce you our Peace Performance Train members. So as I said, uh, Sylvia discovered the Peace Train and immediately joined us uh, and uh, offered me her book at the time, there was one book in Italian and English. Then she asked for my help to translate it into French. We did it uh, uh, together. And now we have a trilingual uh, book of Sylvia's poetry and Sylvia's uh, photography. And you can see also the, the fo photos, uh, most of which are already also in the book uh, uh, here. So, uh, so she joined the peace train and, and we started cooperating in many ways. And then and the uh, book you can buy at the end. There are yes. still eight copies and she will do, do sign it for you. And there is more in and the car more. which is nearby. Which is, so if you want more, there is more. And then we uh, also, a few months later, 
uh, uh, met uh, one of our latest members of the peace train, uh, Patrick Carnotenis. Uh, Carnotensis. <laughs> I'm sorry. I <laughs> I should be better with uh, memory. And he's here with uh, three uh, instruments. Uh, and uh, I suggest uh, that you first hear the beauty and uh, the melody of his instruments and of Silvia's uh, poetry in Italian. And then I will ask him to tell us about these instruments because I think they hold a secret. And uh, just before I give the, the, the floor to Silvia, I will add, well, as you read, she's uh, Italian, she's uh, a, a poetess uh, and also a lawyer. As a lawyer, she works uh, here at the European Parliament. Uh, so, so that is also this beautiful, uh, this beautiful thing that Brussels brings to us. It's really the meeting of different worlds. And here it's different words in one person, both the institution and the art and diversity. And as for the English uh, um, um, part of the poetry, Partly she wrote it herself, partly it was translated and then revised uh, by, uh, by friends. Silvia. Thank you. So thank you, Svetlana. Thank you, Frank, who invited me to, for this presentation. I'm really delighted for that. Thank you, Patrick, because he also came on board in this uh, small adventure of uh, presenting the book also with music. And now I will, uh, uh, I will start directly with the reading, with the declamation of some poems. So um, first of all, just a question to, to know the audience better, because you will be also welcome then to, to participate in the discussion, in the exchange. But can I ask who among you doesn't understand French? Raise your hands. Okay, just, just to know. And who doesn't understand English? <laughs> okay, so everybody understands English, uh, someone um, uh, French, and I guess uh, who doesn't understand Italian? Oh, okay, maybe the same as the French. Okay, very interesting. So, I, um, so I will start with the declamation of poems. Um, please uh, feel these poems, meaning that uh, relax. And this first part is really artistic. You can even close your eyes and just immerse yourself in the music, uh, in the in the poems, and like a swim on the crest of the in the sea where there is this crest of the waves. So. I will uh, read the, the title first and then uh, the, the poem. To each poem uh, there is a photo linked. So in this case, for example, uh, it's the same photo that you have there for this poem. You, you, might, uh, you might find some poems which correspond and anyway it will be the photo that I will show you. sorgente fresca pura la sorgente appare come un miracolo dalla terra calda incinta di essa pulisce l'aria circostante disseta le piante gli animali e le persone la sorgente porta felicità tutto intorno appare e scompare tra le foglie giocando al gioco dell'esistenza il suo suono è sempre diverso e non ha fine dà evidenza di vita e continuità la sua trasparenza sorprende, accarezza le pietre mentre passa. La 
sorgente pulisce e purifica, servendo e preservando la natura. Profuma anche trasparenza, mentre il suo sapore è gusto di eternità. sogni, macchie colorate nell'aria, musica e mare, niente di speciale, solo il miracolo della vita. Chi vedrebbe una quercia in un seme, un oceano nelle nuvole, un essere umano unico nascere da un altro anche lui unico scoprendo questi miracoli nella realtà iniziamo a giocare al gioco della vita As you have may, may have noticed that this was Santorini in Greece because the photos are from all over the world. And now, this is Belgian, Payotland. Il ritmo della vita. Il tempo sembra essersi fermato, si ode delicato e forte il suono della vita. Sembrava essersi perso nel fragore della corsa. Quel ritmo vitale era coperto dal rumore, 
aspro e rude dalla corsa senza senso per l'uomo senza senso per la natura l'improvviso riappare quel suono colorato dolce e gioviale accarezza le nostre azioni da loro senso e bellezza ci si chiede perché si fosse accelerato così tanto da perdere il senso della distanza dell'obiettivo senza raggiungere alcun traguardo vitale era una corsa innaturale e disumana che non portava a nulla gli animali ci guardavano chiedendosi perché quell'autolisionismo e ci amavano comunque tutta la natura ci amava e non ci ha mai abbandonato aspettava che tornassimo al ritmo sano della vita painting we will speak about afterwards. Oggi ho dipinto il sole. Oggi ho dipinto il sole. Mancava sulla tela da quel paesaggio bellissimo ma spento. Il mare lo chiamava. Sole Illuminami, riscaldami e fammi brillare di gioia e di luce. Allora il sole arrivò, grande, avvolgente e saggio. Cosparse di energia i grani di sabbia dorata. Accompagnò le piante mosse dal vento diresse le barche ed accarezzò il mare che lo aveva chiamato tutto guardò baciò e lì restò So swimming in the same sea and following the same wave, eh? Patrick and I. I hope you are too. So, il sole ed il mare. This is my country, Italy, Sardinia. Sunset on the sea. Il sole si incendia prima di arrivare al mare a timore della sua grandezza, della sua potenza. Allora, calando, si fa più caldo che mai per paura di spegnersi al tocco con l'acqua. Il sole, rosso di timidezza di fronte a tanta magnificenza. Ma appena sfiora le onde tranquille, penetra nel blu intenso della profondità impregnandosi di salsedine bianca si arrende con fiducia a tanta grandezza e si affida a lui che conduce sapiente alla meta il sole rosso e caldo diventa tranquillo procedere al ritmo irregolare delle onde del mare.
is a delicious poem. <laughs> you can see it from the photo. Maybe we have one photo maybe there, I think. Yeah. Made by me. The waffle, the photo, and the poem. <laughs> so called self made. Maybe you will try to understand the meaning in Italian, it's wonderful. And we change this too much. Che dolcezza, l'arte di amare. Che cos'è amare? Grande tesoro per chi dà e per chi riceve. Prezioso dono di sapere, vedere l'altro dove egli è e lì ammirarlo, supportarlo, aiutarlo a crescere. Amare è come assaporare un frutto che sa di vita perché è esso stesso espressione della vita. Nessuna nota aggiunta, soltanto accompagnarlo con gli ingredienti giusti, giochi dell'esistenza. E poi immergersi nel gusto senza tradirsi. Amare è un'arte, la più difficile e la più preziosa. dedicate this, so this, uh, this song, <laughs> this, uh, this poem, to Frank. Because uh, this poem is different from the others. And I think it goes straight to the heart of all of us, I think, who love Europe. Europe in terms of all our uh, souls, of our uh, uh, friendship, love, and, um, and potential, and assets, human assets. I think I would like to dedicate it to Frank because uh, he puts in contact many European hearts, many European souls. And so what a bigger um, service one can do to, to build Europe. So thank you very much, Frank, and uh, this is especially for you, but for all of us. Because moreover, this is really a, a, a spontaneous, also a creative, artistic uh, uh, yes combination. Because we we tried some of the poems, but not all. So we, we are just following our way, and uh, you know what you are listening now is really unique. That's why we are recording it because it will never be again. I mean, he's follow me as I'm uh, declaiming now, but this moment is unique. It's like the crest of the way. There won't be another one. And you are part of it. We are making it all together. So now he will explain what he prepared. I don't know, actually, we, we spoke in general, but I don't know specifically. So if you want to say something, otherwise we'll go on there. This is a little joke. This <laughs> instrument. Yeah, you can but it's a little it. joke in music. And music loves Europe, and Europe loves music and cultures, and that's why I thought by this poem, this music could be interesting as a joke, but not as a joke, as we are tonight. Che cosa l'Europa? Che cosa l'Europa? senza genio italiano, volontà francese, forza tedesca, vuoto contenitore, legalmente perfetto, ma dove il suo spirito? Guarda l'Europa come tesoro umano, fertile campo che genera alberi alti, foreste riossigenanti per il mondo intero. 
terreno nutriente dove valori umani di varie origini e culture stimolano la crescita, ispirano pace. Sole brilla su questo campo e scaldano con i tuoi, suoi frutti, con i tuoi raggi, perché dia i suoi frutti. Lambiscilo, mare, danzando all'orizzonte. dell'anima che si riunisce al corpo per far festa con lui della bellezza dell'infinito possibile. Oggetti, persone e natura sono occasionali strumenti di ispirazione, gioco per l'esercizio della mente. Il significato è più profondo e serio. Si tratta di vedere l'invisibile significato per la nostra anima e farlo volare, danzare, cantare in una melodia perfetta. Si parla di una realtà invisibile ma presente, la si rende concreta come noi che possiamo così percepirla con i nostri sensi e goderne col corpo. Quando l'anima parla, si può ascoltarla e scriverla in mille modi, 
dipingerla con mille colori, cantarla e suonarla in musica. Così diciamo che c'è, è presente, tanto concreta da vederla nel volo di un gabbiano, nel galoppo di un cavallo o nel sorriso di un bambino. Attraverso le parole di una poesia, la realtà invisibile della nostra anima si fa concreta e vera, ci conforta nei momenti di tristezza, ci incoraggia in quelli dell'azione. Scrivere poesie è rappresentare il miracolo della nostra esistenza, perenne, forte e vera, nella realtà dei sensi, strumenti di gioco e percezione. Bravissimi! Parto con of this. I, I could feel you a lot. And, uh, not, uh, not yeah, I think that was a very nice energy. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you. And second, those who are hungry, croissant has just arrived. Is there anyone who wants a croissant? Yeah. No. Now we have the right. yes, croissant. Okay. I, I bring you one. Dédicace après, c'est sûr. Oui, oui. Thank you. So, uh, thank you, uh, thank you, first of all, Sylvia and, and Patrick for this uh, beautiful performance. Uh, um, my role now is to uh, present to you the part of the book which is in English and French. And uh, I think that uh, quite a few of you could not understand it in Italian, but could follow the music, not only beautiful Patrick's music, uh, but also the music of the uh, Italian and Sylvia reciting it. Uh, as I said, uh, I uh, contributed with Sylvia and uh, with a friend of ours who is here uh, to the French translation of the book. And, um, and uh, it already existed uh, in Italian and English before, so this is, as you could see, the trilingual edition. I will read it uh, in French and English, mostly in English, uh, for everybody to be able to uh, uh, understand and also to speed up so that we can all talk to Sylvia later and hear more about her uh, poetics and philosophy, I can say, really, uh, behind this poetry. Uh, so mostly in English, but as I did uh, uh, contribute to the French translation, I will also read it in French off and on. And then if the audience wants to hear it in another language, just let us know. And if somebody wants to read it in another language, that would be also your gift to us. So just let us know. Uh, the first one is uh, The Spring. And uh, it is accompanied with this photo here. It is also my favorite uh, of Sylvia's uh, many uh, beautiful uh, poems. I like them all, but this is my favorite, which is why I will first read it in French. And for those who don't understand, well, French is also very melodious. <laughs> la source, fraîche, pure. La source apparaît comme un miracle de la terre enceinte d'elle. Elle purifie l'air, environnement, étanche la soif des plantes, des animaux et des humains. 
la source apporte du bonheur tout autour, tout autour. Elle apparaît et disparaît parmi les feuilles, jouant le jeu de l'existence. Le son qu'elle produit est toujours différent et infini. Elle témoigne de la vie et de la continuité. Sa transparence surprend caresse les pierres quand elles passent. La source est, nettoie et purifie, servant et préservant la nature. Elle parfume même la transparence, tandis que son goût est saveur d'éternité. And this one I will read also in uh, English, and then the rest, mostly in English or only in English. And if somebody wants also in French, just let me know. But we need time for discussion. So, the second one is called happiness. Life continues on a stork's nest. Heartbeats of life that open up to the world. We are instruments to continue the existence and to serve joy. We adapt to instincts. We follow them, confident and positive. We are free in the infinite work of life's creation, and we follow it. It's good to adapt to a perfect masterpiece and to be part of it. There is nothing greater that we can do. Happiness is a living life as it is. The next one, what are your dreams? Colorful spots in the air, music and sea. Nothing special, just the miracle of life. Who would see an oak in a seed, an ocean in the clouds, a unique human being born from another world, just as unique? While discovering these miracles in reality, we start playing the game of life. The rhythm of life. Time seems to have stopped. You can hear the delicate and strong sound of life. It seems to be lost in the rush of the race. That lively rhythm was covered by the harsh and rough noise, by the race. Nonsensical for men, nonsensical for nature. Suddenly, that colorful sound reappears, sweet and jovial. It caresses our actions. It gives them sense and beauty. One wonders why we accelerated so much that we lost the sense of distance, of achievement, without reaching any vital end. It was an unnatural and inhuman race to nothing. The animals were watching us, wondering why such self-harm, and they loved us anyway. All the nature loved us, and it never abandoned us. It was waiting for us to return to the healthy rhythm of life. I painted the sun, and this one, um, this one is uh, the um, illustration, and we will come back to it in the discussion. Today, I, or Sylvia, painted the sun. It was missing on the canvas. From that beautiful but dull landscape, the sea was calling it sun. Light me up, warm me up and make me shine with joy and light. Then came the sun, raised in healthy and white. It sprinkled with energy, grains of golden sand. It 
accompanied the tanks, moved by the winds. He directed the boats and caressed the sea that had, that had called it. It looked at everything, kissed it, and remained there. The sun and the sea. The sea is here. The sun and the sea are here. The sun ignites before reaching the sea. It is afraid of its greatness, of its power. Then going down, it gets hotter than ever for fear of going out at its touch with the water. The sun, red with shyness, in front of so much magnificence. But as soon as it brushes the calm waves, penetrates the deep blue of the depths, impreg impregnates itself with white salt, it surrenders with confidence to such greatness, and it entrusts itself to the sea, which wisely leads it to its goal. The red and hot sun becomes calm, moving, the irregular rhythm of the waves of the sea. The art of loving, and for the art of loving, Sylvia, as she already explained, shows the dessert that she made to uh, underline the connection between the senses. How sweet the art of loving. What is it to love? Great treasure for those who give and for those who receive. Precious gift of knowledge to see the other one, where he or she is, and therefore to admire, support, and help them grow. Loving is like tasting a fruit, which tastes of life, because it is itself an expression of life. Not a note added, just accompany it with the right bearings, the gains of existence. And then immerse yourself in its taste without betraying yourself. Loving is an art, the most difficult and the most precious one. Now I'm happy to read in Brussels, in front of the European Parliament, What is Europe? The poem that Sylvia dedicated to crown our biggest defense, defender of Europe. What is Europe? What is Europe without Italian genius, French will, German vigor, an empty box perfectly organized by law? but without its own spirit. See Europe as a human treasure, a fertile field where grow tall trees, forests, offering pure air for the whole world. Nourishing land where human values of different origins and cultures stimulate growth and inspire peace. Sun, shine on this field and warm it with your rays so that it delivers its fruits. See, touch it, dancing on the horizon. The creation of the sea. And here we also have a beautiful photo of the sea that Sylvia made. The sea embroiders lace with each wave, grows, gathers itself up, and then explodes in frothy energy. Rejoice in the gaze which intriguingly follows it, so as not to miss anything of that unique show. At every moment that follows that current, that wind, that eternal creation, it is the instant and the eternal together, 
as if one cannot exist without the other. A paradox is made possible. And us? What are we in relation to this show, to this creation? We are ourselves part of it. And only for this reason can we preserve it. With our senses and with our soul, themselves instant and eternal, a possible paradox. And the last one, which uh, sums up uh, the poetics of Silvia Polidori, and it is called Writing Poetry. And it is also the last poem in the book. Writing poetry is an exercise of life. Gymnastics of the soul that meets the body to celebrate it and to celebrate with it the beauty of the infinite possibility. Objects, people and nature, they are occasional tools of inspiration, a game for the existence of the mind. The meaning is deeper and more serious. It is about seeing the invisible meaning of our soul and making it fly, dance and sing in a perfect melody. There is talk of an invisible but present reality. It is made corporeal, like us, so that we can perceive it with our senses and enjoy it with our body. When the soul speaks, we can listen to it and write it in a thousand ways. Paint it with a thousand colors. Sing it and play it to music. So we say that it is there, it is present, so substantial that it can be seen in the flight of a seagull in the gallop of a horse or in the smile of a child. Through the words of a poem, the invisible reality of our soul becomes concrete and true. It comforts us in moments of sadness, encourages us in times of action. Writing poetry is representing the miracle of our existence, perennial, strong, and true, in the reality of the senses, instruments of play and perception. per la musica brava, brava, sì, sì. Allora, adesso mangiamo pasto adesso vogliamo da mangiare no 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 May I ask you, this is not for sin, but uh, anything is for sin here, mm -hmm. but it's spontaneous love now by me, if you allow me, to ask you if someone wants to, to express uh, its own, uh, more than thoughts, but its, its own feeling or, uh, I don't know, if you want to say something, please say it, and then we will start uh, the, the description of, of the book. Yes, please. Uh, I would like to ask you... As you want. As yeah. you prefer. As but you English, prefer. I think English is you know, the best because everybody speaks. Any yes. language is welcome. Yeah. No, but English is the best.
Alors, uh, so thank you very much. I think I will answer in English and everybody will understand. Is it okay, my voice? Maybe now it's okay, no? Because we have yeah. more. Sorry, but. Uh, yeah, and my voice is not so strong, but if you don't li uh, hear me in the back, please raise the hand and I will try to, to scream. In that case, we can or both stand here. But yeah, we can, maybe. We can okay. start like this, and if you don't hear, just let us know. And maybe those who are close to the door, because Frank does it regularly, if you can close the door, it yeah. makes a huge difference. Thank you so much, and sorry to bother you, but it's a huge difference. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. My mistake. We may. Ask. Yes. Okay. Hmm? Yes. Right. Uh, when the bus. Okay. okay. So, um, uh, uh, first of all, uh, how did I discover my talent? Well, thank you very much for the talent. This is you who say talent. Uh, I just. I j yeah, yeah. No, thank you very much. And. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But if you say this, I think uh, if you appreciated it, I, I'm very glad. I, I cannot say that I have a talent, of course, <laughs> because uh, the others need to tell that if uh, you feel it. Uh, for me, it's uh, really nature. It's, uh, I always wrote poetry since I was very young, um, waking up in the night and writing. But this was something, you know, I didn't give and nobody gave importance to that neither my parents and uh, my poems uh, from when I was very young are lost unfortunately but uh, so I, I am used to write then I didn't write for many years I wrote but I wrote as a lawyer so I wrote <laughs> many rules for the European institutions um, but not poetry and then everything came back with the, with the during the pandemic no, well, no, before the pandemic. So before the pandemic, I restarted to write a bit. Then during the lockdown, I really, I had more time, a more peaceful time. And so I wrote more. And then, so the, 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 let's say that the decision then to, to publish the poem, because uh, I, I didn't have in my mind, of course, any idea to publish them, moreover. They were only for me, but then it came really during the lockdown because I thought if it's so nice for me to write this poem, if it makes me so happy and so feeling better, maybe people, how can I help people? Because during that period, I think everybody was wondering how we could help the others who were suffering at that moment. So I thought maybe if I publish them, the ones who read them, maybe they will also feel better. And that's what it's written actually at the beginning of the book. I say enjoy the poems and uh, you should, you should normally feel better. But uh, I didn't have a certainty of that, of course. It was just an intuition and then it, it became true. So the result was exactly that. Uh, and normally from the comment I received I even uh, on the website where the book is published, the comments are right that. So um, they say, your poems make us feel better. And that's my objective uh, uh, yeah, reached in terms of a publication, because I already felt better when I wrote them. So this is just uh, in terms of what the reader, what the reader feels. So, uh, so my talent came from, I think, forever. <laughs> it was always there, but then it was expressed uh, in this period. And um, the second question then, was about the technique, well, exactly. how you acquired the technique. Did you need to acquire it? Yeah, actually, again, uh, again on that, uh, it's quite spontaneous. I didn't uh, study anything and. Um, but here, uh, and uh, actually, I yes, I link this to the to the last poem that we read, writing poetry. So um, um, when I write poetry, I I try to do it in a way, but I don't try rationally. It's really something uh, uh, which comes from the whole all my body, I would say, because I f even when I write. I feel my poetry with all senses. Uh, there is a nice uh, um, uh, preface of my book, 
uh, written by Natale Antonio Rossi, who is the president of the Italian Federation of Writers, who says that my poetry is uh, synesthetic. Synesthetic comes from Greek, so syn aesthetics, perceive together. So uh, in my poetry, you not only read the words, but you should always feel them with all your senses. So why here we had music, but normally even if you read it by your own, you should hear a music, which is your music, your own music of your soul. You should see some images which are linked to the ones I describe, but then they are yours. So again, all the senses are involved. And when I write, so my technique, if I can call it as a technique, is to involve all my senses and to express what I feel with my soul in, um, in an harmonic way. So uh, a piece of art, um, as I think should be, is uh, as the ancient Greeks again thought it should be, um, it should be harmonic, it should be uh, a, a pro, uh, it should contain a proportion of things. So as in a painting, you see, for example, if you think about uh, Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo, just because I'm Italian, but also other artists, you see a proportion. Your eyes, even if you don't think too much, but you see something harmonic, uh, something uh, symmetric, uh, proportional, and you feel in order. The same thing is with a poem. If you put the right words in the right position of the sentence, in the right way, moreover, a poem has a metric, so it's not only, it's not like prose, it's, it has a metric. So if you give to the poem the right proportion so that when you read it, it penetrates, in fact, in a, in a nice way, that's my form of art. So if I can say that's my technique, is to give as a result a piece of poetry which is nice and which makes you better. Just because it is, in fact, the same order, be careful on that, not the order of a kind of art, it's the order of nature. And we, all of us, are part of nature. We are permeated, per, uh, permeati, we say in Italian, so we are, we are nature. And so if we, with a piece of art, we we reproduce, let's say, we reproduce that kind of order, the order of nature, we feel better. That's automatic because uh, we re-enter in the, in the nature, so as we are. And if you think about all the distractions that we have today from our nature, like uh, phones, like uh, technology in general, like uh, yeah, like anything ugly that we see even on the weapons. street, uh, weapons. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's. Uh, these are even the extreme things that we see, so distonic from our nature. Yeah, then even a poem written in an harmonic way can help, because we absorb something which is pure which brings us to the order. And that's what we need, in fact. From there, if we have our order, we can build whatever, even Europe. <laughs> and we should. The, the, the third question was, who is your idol uh, or a role model in poetry? Well, um, there are uh, several from the ancient Greece. We can uh, uh, mention Sappho. We can mention, uh, uh, as an Italian, Dante Alighieri, we, which we call the Sommo Poeta, so I really go back in time. But I also love Pablo Neruda to go outside Europe, and he was a diplomat by chance. So he was not a poet, uh, again, not a poet by, um, by training, he was a diplomat. But if you read his poems, I find in them you know, they, they touch you, they arrive you straight to your heart and to your... Uh, so that's what I like in a poem, that uh, it touches you. And um, what I also would like to add is that I wrote the book, I write poetry and I enjoy that. But then what you read, 
if you read my book and what you read in my poems, it will be your unique individual poem. So it will be different from the poem read by the person beside you. Because this poem in that moment will become your poem. And when you are just silent reading it, it will be all something rich which will arrive to you as you are. So it will be unique. So here we have uh, one poem, but it will be infinite poems uh, for the people who read, them, who read it. I hope I answer to all the questions and you provoke the, a lot of things that I would have said afterwards. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, well, I will say that you know, the imagery aspect of the material talking about, I felt it deeply and I have to shut my eyes to see the image because otherwise too much distraction. So I, I, I get what you mean. I was just wondering as you were speaking, you said that uh, you know you want this to be a good factor. You, you you want to make people feel better and you present in a way the beauty of what you see. The question is that I don't know if there's a lot of ugliness as well out there. And how do you actually handle that? Do you actually present that? Or you look past it to something else? Yes, I missed the did, one. Did everybody hear page. the question? Did everybody hear? Otherwise, you can repeat maybe. Yes. I can speak louder if you want. Or I can repeat because, well, you can maybe repeat it towards the other because it's, it's the direction yes. also. Sorry, yes. I said I appreciated the imagery aspect. I could feel it myself, I shut my eyes to get that sense of feeling to avoid all the distractions from us. So uh, I appreciate that very much. And also said that she wants to devote the feel good factor. She wants to make us feel better. And you can see that, particularly in the in the poems that were selected for, for recitation of the title. The question is, she also mentions there's a lot of ugliness and birds and fruit around. What did you see? How does she present that to make us feel better? Does, it, does she go past it into something else? Or do you just present it as something different? I haven't heard one of those poems, so I'm wondering how you deal with that. Yes. Thank you very much for this question. I think this is really a good question in this precise moment and what you mentioned before, also the war and so on. So I think it's good to talk about uh, the reality because we are not with my poetry I don't try to be in an ideal world uh, out of the reality so I appreciate this question in fact I start from the reality uh, to briefly describe the way of the way of my writing I, I start from the reality uh, then this reality touches my soul, my, my emotions, let's say, provokes my emotions. And then from my emotions, I re-express again the reality because we are senses, but we are also spiritual. So I need to describe it again with the reality. Now, which reality do I see? And which reality inspires me? Because these are two slightly different um, uh, aspects. Normally, I'm inspired from a, a, a beautiful reality, so something which touches me in the nice way, let's say, which caresses my soul. And I think all of us, when we see a child, or when we see a horse, when we see the sea, I mean, even if we are uh, nervous, but we, we have a moment of, of a nice perception, so normally, I'm, I write and I'm, I'm inspired by this kind of images. Uh, but all, also sometimes, and this is the case of the poem, uh, the, co the poem, The Rhythm of Life, for example, I don't know if you were here when I read it, but uh, it talks about uh, the rhythm of life during the COVID time. And there, I was, um, I, I live on the North Sea now, and I was uh, 
biking, I, I often go in biking to the Zwin. For the one who knows it, it's a very nice uh, natural reserve in Knock Haste. I invite you to visit it, it's very nice. And there are many animals, many of these photos are from there, by the way. And uh, while normally there are many tourists biking there, strangely I was alone because it was during the lockdown well, lockdown we had some freedom to go out it was not illegal but uh, but I was alone and I had this image so a sheep and a goat <coughs> looking around because I think they were wondering where are they actually actually this is the poem dove sono where where are they but also there is another one, which is the rhythm of life, which is this one. And also here, I, I saw this image, because the image in my poem, the images of the book, are not chosen by chance or after I write the poems, are really the moments of the inspiration. So when I'm inspired, for example, even now, if you inspire me, if I'm in, the, in a nice situation, I need to immediately to, to, to take a photo otherwise and to write the poems, otherwise it's lost. So in this specific case, so the rhythm of life and where are they, they are during the lockdown. I, I wrote them during the lockdown, both of them. Um, well, the situation was uh, okay. The landscape, the nature was still nice. So I'm normally not inspired when I'm in a dirty place or uh, yeah, no, I need to be in the nature. I need to be, at least until now, I didn't have this kind of inspiration. But still, I, I saw a situation which is a bit atypical and a bit strange. And it provoked me also a reflection on, of that moment. So the moment of the lockdown, which was very painful also for everybody. And uh, so what I do, to go back straight to the answer to your question, what do I do when I see not a nice situation or when I see an ugly yeah, uh, situation. I try to, anyway, to, to penetrate that situation, to grasp the, the, the soul of that, and you can understand the soul of that, uh, of that moment, of that situation. And if it's uh, a good one, okay, I let my soul dance because that's, uh, you know, you play with your uh, emotions. But if it's bad, I try to, again, to see the good in the bad. So to see what, what provoked that bad situation and how to turn it into good. So how I could, let's say, digest in a way, metabolize that ugly situation in a way to make it human. And, and human, uh, the human being is nice, is like nature. Eh? All is positive. There is nothing negative. Life is positive by nature. Otherwise, we wouldn't exist. We wouldn't exist. Philosophically, the question, if we are here, it's because there is love. There is beauty, as Svetlana said at the beginning. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. And that's why when uh, the beauty is limited, the love is limited, eh, then we have pain, we have sickness, we have wars. Just because we are limiting our, uh, our uh, potential, our beautiful potential. So in those situations, I, I just catch the, the situation. And then, like in these two poems, The Rhythm of Life, here I say that these animals were wonder. No, sorry, I go back always. It's strange. Eh? I always go to the, the other poem. Where are they? The animals were wondering where we were we human beings and uh, because they needed us also so they needed that we we should have come back to the normal life so in that bad situation i found a way to 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 find the, the good solution the good answer so that's that's what i do and also the rhythm of life uh, i say that during that moment uh, we went back actually to the rhythm of life so that moment was so bad but I don't know if you agree, but I think we, it allowed us to have a moment of stop, a moment of uh, no rush. We were stuck at home, uh, so we couldn't, uh, we couldn't go so fast. And maybe we rediscovered a bit the objective of uh, 
our objectives of life and what life really is. A bit more slow, a bit more uh, intense, but uh, not intense in the rush, intense to be slow. So I think these are two good examples of what I do when I see dystonic situations. Dystonic in terms uh, of uh, natural, not, uh, not according to the nature. And so I try to, to bring back through my poem, to bring back to the what should they be, where the truth should be and what should we do. I don't know if I was clear, no, I, I tried to. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a poet, but verbal in it, but, but I, I write everything and I take some of your approaches to that also, not to dwell too much on the negative, but to look for the positive in the negative, and so, so I understand what you're saying. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the question, very interesting. Yes, a question from a young, maybe the youngest person in the audience, so I'm very grateful. Uh, w would you mind standing up and yeah. also facing people? Because I'm often here at these events sitting in the back, so I know that in the back it's not easy to hear, and that's why I'm I intervening. Thank you. Uh, I have more question about uh, the translation. English, French and Italian are very complex languages that sometimes have a different vibe, perhaps. And so I was wondering, did you encounter any challenges when uh, translating the poems and if so is there a specific one that uh, was more complex and what was the process to make sure that every poem is translated uh, in the way that you felt it when you wrote it Maybe about the French one I can very say of course a very interesting another interesting question because especially because it comes from uh, the youngest uh, uh, in the audience and it's the most technical I would <laughs> say and uh, I will answer together with Svetlana then I will leave the floor mm -hmm. to Svetlana because this was really a challenge so as uh, Svetlana <laughs> mentioned it at the beginning I always need to explain because it, it's strange I don't know if some other poets do that I don't know but I write in both Italian, English and French in general. But why? Because of the reason I said at the beginning. My poetry is a synesthetic, so all senses together. And so when I write, when I have an inspiration, here I don't know which language I would use because we are multilingual, but when I'm among French people, I often go, I live on the North Sea, as I told you, and I often go to see the sunset or even better, the, the sunrise on the beach, really. And I normally go with a friend who has dogs. So the dogs go and I'm with her. And many times I say, please, go on, go on, because I have an inspiration and I need to write. And I, if I don't catch the moment, I... And so in that case, for example, we were speaking in French. So automatically my poem comes in French because I'm, again, permeated. I, know, I don't know if in English we can say permeated. Uh, we absorb, I absorb. The, the environment and so I write in the language which is more close to the environment because it makes it more correspondent to what I write. Mm -hmm. Now this book was written in Italian and English um, and what when I decided to publish I decided to publish them in the same book and I translated both languages in the other and already was a big challenge because as you said, languages are expression of a culture. So it's not only translating the words, it's not a recipe, it's poetry. And so you need to express through the words a universe of sense. And uh, the rhythm is also different. So already at the time I encountered that challenge. Uh, but then the biggest challenge was when I decided to translate the whole book so the first edition of the book is Italian and English in French, because there I had to translate all in another language. And then Svetlana came to help me because we did the work together to, yeah, to make these poems alive also in French language. And French and Italian are two Latin languages, as you know, close to each other, more than English and Italian, and it's even more difficult because they are 
two complex uh, languages, two complex uh, cultures. So when I did the first version, because I translated it first, it was really spontaneous. So Svetlana had to do a tough work. I, I still Maybe uh, I thank can say her. Maybe I about the translation. Yeah, of course. Yes. I still uh, thank her a lot. I will no. read the blog. Right? Uh, but, uh, but she did really a tough work because she had to correct a lot of things and, uh, and now I leave you the floor for... Yes, yeah. yes. I, I think as, as a translator or translator that uh, indeed uh, made it. The problem with French and Italian in general and uh, Silvia and I are good friends, so it was tough work but it was also tough between us. Uh, but uh, I can be tough when necessary and also Silvia. Uh, our poetic souls, uh, also, we are also passionate. So the problem with translating from Italian is that sometimes uh, things are so similar, but in Italian they work and in French they don't. So, uh, so that was really the biggest challenge because indeed Silvia sent me the first uh, translation into French, which was extremely close to the original. And then there was discussion, and then there was negotiation, but that is really nice. There I was like, no, Sylvia, I cannot. And then there were also sometimes concessions. Okay, I can live with this, but this I insist. And, and that was really nice. Now, in the end, we have a version, of course, there will be other editions, and always that is, I mean, translation like writing, I also write. Uh, 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 theater plays, uh, but, uh, and I translate poetry, I translate it for, Paul Valéry into, into Serbian from French years ago. So, so it's always work in pro the progress. When you reread the poem that you translated or you, or you wrote, you are like, okay, this can be even better. But now, finally, we have a version and we have a friend who also, who's a French native speaker, to whom we would sometimes turn uh, regarding some, uh, uh, some uh, doubts. Uh, but that was the thing. Sometimes, and only when it is necessary, you really do need to take the step back. And sometimes the step back needs to be big in order to, for the meaning to remain the same. So it, in French, there is this beautiful uh, um, expression, faux amis, like false friends. And between Italian and French, there are lots of false friends. So that was, that was the challenge and also the challenge uh, uh, where we worked uh, together and we would actually meet here uh, next door most often uh, there and just work and sometimes on Zoom and everything uh, but very often here and then it would be yes uh, the, the melody is something that you that you feel but it is very important and then I was I was sometimes tough I know uh, but it you was like, it has that. to be, I was like, Sylvia, it has to be as good in the translation as in the original. And now, like Sylvia, I cannot say <laughs> I'm talented, we're talented, we but proud. we, uh, yes, we, we are, are proud, proud and we stand uh, behind it, uh, behind this uh, translation. Yeah. <coughs> to add something from my side, you all know Baudelaire, the French poet. He wrote a poem where the sun and the moon play major role. Le soleil, masculine, and he expresses through le soleil the male force of the sun. La lune, the moon, feminine, the tenderness of women, all of these things. To translate it into German, a disaster, because in French, in German, it is female the sun <laughs> and male the moon. How to manage it? Generations of translators in Germany have failed or a little bit succeeded. That, means that is a dead end street for translation when the word, the sex of the word has a meaning and the sex of the word is different in another language. It's an ex excellent illustration yeah. because not every poem has that level of difficulty, but almost. When you are really a conscientious <laughs> translator of poetry, it's almost there to, to get it all. And that yeah. is the creative part I of remember translation. The sea, the sea yes. is a neutral, well, neutral, but I personify, but neutral in English, the sea yes. is it. Mm -hmm. In Italian is il mare, so it's <coughs> masculine. 
et c'est la mer. Yes. Can you imagine? <laughs> and, and since my poems are very metaphoric, <laughs> and, uh, so for me the yes. sea is yeah, the mm-hmm. infinite life and so on, mm-hmm. uh, it's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> when you need to translate yes. it, really. It's a tough yeah. job, but then in the but end... I, I uh, thank Svetlana because no, she was I very you, patient. But you too. Uh, very no, you patient too. You were very me. helpful. And, and, and you would keep me, sometimes you would keep me, sometimes I was too far from the original. No, oh, I want you to follow. It was really tough negotiations. <laughs> yeah. um, more, more questions? Congratulations for your presentation. Um, this reminds me of one of my... Maybe stand up and speak up, sorry. <laughs> it's my tough side, huh? no, but it's for everybody's for, uh, good. Uh, this reminds me of my courses when I was school on Western languages. And they're difficult, yes. Uh, but, uh, Where are you from? From Congo. From Congo, okay. But, uh, it also reminds me of traditional Africa, mm-hmm. where they would have qualified you, uh, the ladies who listen to the wind and who speaks to the animals. My, mm-hmm. my question is, are you going to put this into a digital form to adapt yourself to a modern world? Thank you. Uh, first, I didn't understand. Uh, so, I, uh, you are women who listen to the wind and and speak to the uh, animal. Translate to the wind and yeah. Ah, to the animals. Ah, yes. Beautiful. Yes. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh wow. Uh huh. You can hear the wind and speak to the animals. Beautiful. Well, I, I, wow. I, I, we have to write it down. Yes, huh? yes, yes, exactly. Fortunately, we are oh, recording. Yes. Actually, I would now mention myself, uh, this poet uh, that we, we mentioned at the beginning, Zvonko Penovic. He used to tell me, because uh, he became a friend of mine, I should have gone to Croatia, actually, to present this book, and he did it before me, alone. In Croatia, he presented my book. He used to say that there are people who come, I don't know if you remember, from the fifth side of the world. And that is the name of this book, exactly. which is dedicated to people like that. Yes. And, uh, and he kept uh, telling me, you are one of those who are from the fifth side of the world. I said, ah, oh, OK. Yes. So just to say that, uh, yes, we, we are not limited at all uh, to the five senses. We have many more. And uh, indeed, and this allows us uh, to, to grasp uh, uh, yeah, the meaning of uh, the wind, the, the animals, the, and so on. Uh, so, um, going back to the, to the, to the uh, modern means of communication and so on, I have my own YouTube channel. I invite you to subscribe to it. The plan is to, um, to upload uh, video poetry. And uh, for the moment, uh, there is only one video poem, which is the first poem of the book, um, Shining in the Dark, uh, in English and Italian. There will be others, maybe also in French, now that we have the trilingual version. And um, and there are also some events uh, where I presented some presentations in Italian, but also in English. So I invite you really, you can have a look and um, maybe if you want to mm-hmm. to listen to one of those, uh, they are nice. And uh, so I'm this presentation will also go with all mm-hmm. your questions and all your contributions mm-hmm. will also go to YouTube. And let me for this thank another person who is really valuable and who is working now with us who is, don't be emotional, Matko, remain concentrated, he is our cameraman and uh, film producer, so it's thanks to him that the YouTube channel is possible. So thank you, Matko. Uh, now it is because we could then mention yes. people who indeed connect. So I hope I answered to your question. No, it's the fifth dimension. Yes. I don't know if you have other uh, questions or the Svetlana, well, because actually we were supposed yes, to have a conversation yes, but, uh, with the end, end the question, but I think... Uh, I, will, I will just, um, uh, to, to slowly uh, wrap it up, as, as um, Sylvia mentioned, uh, our uh, dear friend who's no longer with us, uh, through whom and Frank we met, Zvonko Penovic, 
in this book, this book, uh, he wrote it before he met Sylvia, which is also what he meant. Otherwise, she would have been in it. Uh, uh, I'm happily also in it. And uh, there is a very nice uh, contribution article that he wrote about Frank and Frank's humanism in this book. And it is in several languages, if you want, and it can be the support for his family. If you want through me, you can you can live through it and, and get more. I will just read one short quotation uh, inspired by, by what you say and, and, and what we said about the peace performance train and what, uh, what we said also about the deep meaning of Sylvia's uh, poetry and art in general. Uh, so the, it is called the fifth side of the world and here he speaks about the four sides. And I'm honored it's in the, in the last, uh, uh, last page called uh, I Didn't Tell You Anything and it is a poem that, that was a surprise to me that he did it, dedicated to me, ending with the words, uh, the rivers on all sides of the world look towards the same sea, towards the same uh, uh, sky towards which and uh, because of which even the most distant destinies rejoice. I believe that it is because of you that life in hope is celebrating its meaning. So we think of uh, Zvonko a beautiful soul that we also celebrate uh, here uh, that connected us and that is also the beauty that connection lives on and that's how we all live on and it is nice art and poetry are there to remind us of the beauty even in in tragedy uh, i mentioned it the, at the beginning that i have i'm very glad that you mentioned uh, matko our assistant uh, and uh, Patrick really uh, brought another dimension to this. So I have a question for Patrick and then just a small, uh, uh, actually, surprise announcement with Sylvia, but then we remain here if you have other questions. Uh, Patrick, tell us about yourself and your instruments, or if you want, about yourself uh, through the story about your instruments. Through the story? Of your instruments. Yeah. Uh, either separately or, or uh, together, but they are beautiful, and I'm not sure we're all familiar with that. You explained us about the little one, but there are two more. I don't know how to explain, maybe... Very okay. simply, names, we don't know, names, even the names, I even the names. And, uh, with music, think, so I, Just speak up, yes. Patrick, please. I think I was born with I was only five years and I started playing accordion, this one, the classical accordion with the piano. Uh, afterwards, when I was 11, uh, it was, it was everyday music, uh, friends of my parents who came and brought me an instrument and said, there to go. And uh, after years and years and years, I played also violin for many years and then I came back I wanted to go for uh, Bandonio, Latin American music, Astrid Piazzolla and the Latin warmth of music. But it was not possible to find lessons and so I came to this instrument which is Italian, the atomic accordion. It's uh, handmade to It's a very warm Sound. <laughs> <laughs> the other one is jealous. But also, I, I like uh, expression music. So I stop to go to the beginning and I reorient also in Eastern or in Ottoman Ottoman culture with Sars, Turkey Sars, and Bakwala. Uh, this is a boot, a very big boot made boat or made in Istanbul. And so I think uh, music has a soul, like words have a soul. 
and the soul, you can find the cultures, but you can't, uh, you have to let's speak the cultures and interpret what they mean. And then it's uh, your music and it's uh, universal music. And you can do it, uh, especially in, in such company. It's nice to improvise a little bit and to, to do things you like. Thank you. This, this was very inspirational. Thank you. Thank uh, you. If I may, I think, I don't know if you felt the same, but I think you were really following. Uh, we were, uh, I felt that we were yes. on the same. Uh, and also with Svetlana, I need to yes. say, and I'm listening yes. to both of you. And it was, it so, was improvised. There yes. were no rehearsals, just a small uh, yes. structural uh, idea. And, and that is, uh, creation needs freedom. So, uh, so I think that is why uh, it Thank needs you. courage also. Uh, uh, improvisation needs courage, but, uh, but then when you leave freedom, that's when you have these small miracles yeah. of life, as you call them. Uh, I don't think we have qu uh, time for my questions, uh, but uh, uh, I will let you, of course, wrap up and uh, I will tell you the, the question that I'm curious about and then mention something about the flowers and other, uh, and, and other senses. So, Oh, question. you have a question. I'm sorry, I didn't see. Okay, of course. Yes. I, I'm wondering if, if you um, have thought of um, making a song of one or more of your poems. Yes, uh, and each poem has a musicality. Each language has a musicality, and uh, of its own, as a poem. Yeah. And if you turn it into a song, it will catch some other inspiration for another musicality, but it will spread in another way. So some poems can be turned into songs, others cannot. Others are already songs. Most of, most of the, the Greek poems are already songs. You don't need to put music in them because they're already the music. That can mm -hmm. thrust the sound. Yes. In, in yes. case not everybody heard the mm -hmm. question, I will just repeat. So it is about whether uh, Sylvia thought of putting some of her poems into the form of uh, songs, uh, given their musicality. Sylvia? The answer is yes, and uh, in my book you will no, find uh, some... Uh, in my book you will find, I said yes, and in my book you will find uh, some poems with an asterisk. This means that they have been already put in music, uh, so for the rest uh, I'm very open, so if any musician or uh, wants to, to try and do it, of course they can be. Uh, but some have already, and uh, yes, the ones with the asterisks. So now uh, you can, uh, for example, uh, I think the, the Bay of Car Carbis Bay has been put into music and others. So mm -hmm. uh, yes, and if you have the book, you will see. Yeah. You're the one singing them. You're the Ah, no, 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 no. The no, question was no. if Sylvia is the one singing in them. No, no, no. Um, so this is a challenge I haven't uh, <laughs> yet, <laughs> because uh, now going into the other challenges, you may mm -hmm. say or I yes. say. Yes, I, I can say yeah. it and then yeah. I will let yeah. you uh, yeah, 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 complete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the, you can see the flowers here, uh, uh, Sylvia and I, uh, this is the first presentation where I also have the role of a translator and I also wrote one of the prefaces in the book uh, and it was an honor for me to be invited by Silvia to do it. Uh, uh, but we did other presentations already and Silvia always uh, brings a beautiful arrangement of uh, flowers. We uh, and we <laughs> also, yes, uh, have a connection. There are all sorts of hidden symbols like in her uh, poetry. Uh, Another reason, like, and I'm sure already listening to the poetry and seeing uh, the, the photos that were chosen, and it's also poets, so uh, it's also photos, and there's music, and there's uh, the description of music and smells, and really reading that book, it's like uh, 
being plunged into all these senses uh, through which uh, Sylvia explains in, in her uh, in her poetics uh, through which the soul speaks to us and we speak to it. Uh, so we also have the sense of smell here. Uh, and, uh, and we saw, I mean, of course, we are in a restaurant. Uh, croissants were mentioned. Now it's lunchtime, we can eat here. But there is one uh, sense uh, that uh, can miss at a, at a presentation like this because we had music we also had visual arts uh, uh, poetry uh, soul speaking and everything touch the, the touch uh, and also with the with the flowers and well this is we are back into real life so even if we are not touching ourselves we can and we're also all happy about the fact that there is physical presence and not only zoom like like we did in the past uh, and then the one missing link, if I can say, is the, the, the taste, the sense of taste. So what about it, Sylvia? Well, what can actually, we do about it? I can just dis disclose the surprise I made for you. <laughs> Normally, I say that my poems need to be eaten, read, as you want. As I told you, you can do whatever with your senses with my poems. Tasty. But can, they can... <laughs> be read and also eaten like Belgian, we are in Belgium, pralines. So when you need a praline, you are in a moment when you need something sweet, what do you do? You take the box of Belgian pralines, you go in a calm corner where you are alone, <laughs> not disturbed by anybody, in a nice environment. Then you take out this fantastic description of the praline they have in Belgium. <laughs> And you choose a noisette, a fondant, noir, blanche, and tout ça. And then you pick your favorite praline. And then you immerse yourself in the taste. The same thing you can do with my poems. But today, I wanted to organize a different surprise for you. Because uh, it's hot, pralines would melt. And I'm just back from Italy. When by the, where, by the way, I received another prize for this book. I'm very happy to tell you this, an international prize. And I brought back some sweets, which are handmade by my mom, who I also thank for this. So they are really sweet from the Italian mom, all handmade and also healthy, because I care of eating healthy with almonds from the south of Italy, Puglia region, which are one of the best, and then just some sugar to make them sweet. So I will take them from here, and now I will give this to you. You can pass it, and you can taste these <laughs> almonds with the sugar. Maybe you can start with Patrick, yes, and then we yes, can... Yes, of uh, <laughs> or with Frank, okay. We can start with Frank, and then go this way, and then... Yes. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> Frank <laughs> deserves... We will, we will uh, make it uh, circulate several times. Huh? Yes. And Democratically. Frank, <laughs> Frank deserves the, the very first... Uh, <laughs> okay. I, I'm good in this. <laughs> yeah, it's very it difficult. Yes. yes. No, no, okay, it. he's good in it. Uh, yes, I, I, I think that I need the work. <laughs> you see. Okay, okay. good, good. <laughs> you can take more than one, eh? don't worry, I have others, so if uh, it's finished, then... <laughs> and you immerse yourself in the taste as well, and... Uh, and you can then, smell the flowers. Yeah. Okay, why do you are <laughs> looking huh? to eat something? Yes, but he said that. Okay. There is a glow okay. here. Claude Archer, and he is a famous whistleblower. That means someone within the institution discovers something negative, asks, informs the security, the, uh, the superiors, they say no, and he will have a press conference this week in the press club. 
as I have now all your CV, all your, um, not CV, but your email, I will send you the invitation for the event of Claude. And if you have any questions on this, please, please ask him as well. Okay? Basically, there will be a conference of uh, one of the ex-UBS bank director that broke the Swiss uh, bank secret in the US. And he will bring some information about uh, how we try to change, improve the situation. And there will be a launch of a whistleblower house here in Brussels. So you're welcome on Wednesday at the press club if you want on the morning to, to hear all, all these people having some ID to improve our present world. And, and while uh, while the, um, the Italian um, nuts, um, hmm? nuts, nuts. Sure. But how do you call that uh, in Italian? Actually, in the village of my mom, they call them nocci atterrati. So, nocci, that's a word of a, of a meaning. Nocci means nuts. You can make them with any type of nuts, and you know them. It's not your first time that you eat, I think. But the ingredients here are very good. And then, and then atterrati, because terra in Italian is ground. And so as you can see, the sugar caramelized mm, nice. becomes uh, dark and brown like the ground. So it's like they are, they are turned into the ground. And this brings it back to nature. So these are really from the ground, plus deliciously from, to plus, your mouth. Plus from mama, from <laughs> your from mama. Of course, that's What the added name? value. Ernesta. Grazie, Ernesta. <laughs> And uh, I just wanted to, um, to repeat that uh, if you want, uh, Sylvia will of course uh, write a dedicus to uh, all of you that, uh, that uh, buy the book, if you wish, uh, in three languages. It's and also, uh, I can and say we will remain a little bit here if you have questions, of course, for, uh, for Sylvia. Okay, therefore, sorry, if you wanted to add? No, 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 like a beast so if you want Sylvia and Patrick to do another surprise another? they prepared are huh? you prepared one surprise no we didn't prepare, oh you didn't but we will uh, improvise now so I surprised them I really thought they did I, this wasn't but if you want you can yes yes, yes. do you want end. do you want because otherwise it really okay. sounded like uh, you know okay. 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 Is there any preference among the ones who no, are already, already, uh, already ready for the products? Or, uh, yeah, we have there one. Is no La musica dell'anima, dai. Let's see if she has otherwise. Oh, oh okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, you have a preference. Great, yes. Great. Which one? Okay, I can read in it French. in French. Everybody agrees, no? So, yes. pardon me for my French, of course. Do you, it would you be like perfect as a, Do as you want to read it uh, uh, um, sentence by, uh, I mean, uh, verse by verse? You in one Italian, 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 in French. Bellissimo. Allez. Bellissimo. To, uh, which page? Good idea. Uh, which one? Uh, 57. Which page? 57. Surprise, surprise. Yeah.
felicità. La vita continua su noi dodici cuori. Bonheur, la vie continue dans un nid de cigogne. Palpiti di vita che si aprono al mondo. Palpitazione della vita che s'ouvre al mondo. Siamo strumenti per continuare l'esistenza e rendiamo servizio alla gioia. Nous sommes des instruments, continuons l'existence et nous rendons service à la joie. Ci adattiamo agli stimoli, li seguiamo, fiduciosi e positivi. Nous nous adaptons aux instincts, nous les suivons, confiants et positifs. Siamo liberi nell'infinita opera di creazione della vita e ci rimettiamo ad essa. Nous sommes libres dans l'œuvre infinie de création de la vie et nous nous en remettons à elle. È bello adattarsi ad un'opera perfetta e farne parte. C'est beau de s'adapter à une œuvre parfaite et d'en faire partie. Di chi non si può. Impossible de faire plus. Felicità è vivere la vita come essa sa. Le bonheur, c'est vivre la vie telle qu'elle est. Now Grazie this is the last moment. Wow. Wow. I don't know, it's lying here. I think someone forgot it to hand it over. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore I take now this task. Now, didn't. please, listen. In my name, Thank you. in the name of Brussels, in the name of the European Union, in the name of the whole of the European continent, <laughs> <laughs> in the name of the globe and in the name of universe, for you, these flowers. Only. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I share this with all of you who have made this event. It was a joint event, so thank you all. So for all of you. Thank you.